Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Okay, the back's going to be made up. You're going to have two fours, two fives, two ones, two twos, and two threes. Everybody will put these in their bag, and everybody's going to have the same amount of chits in their bag. Now, this is going to be the basic setup. The way you're going to win the game is by going all the way around one lap and being the first one to do so. If more than one person go around the lap, then it's whoever who went the furthest over the goal. The inside is always going to be in first place, and then the outside will be so it'll go red, blue, yellow, green. What's going to happen is, is everybody's going to draw three from their bag, and you're going to play one of these tiles. So I can play four, four, or a two. Let's just say I pick the two. The rest will go in here and everybody will reveal at the same time. So the red's gonna move two, one, two. Blue will move two, one, two. Green or yellow will go next. One, two, three can't be on the same spot and the same thing with them. So maybe uh, that wouldn't be any good. Now these are out of the game forever. So let's just say we had something like this where blue was here, maybe uh, yellow was here and green got all the way up here. At the end of the round, what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the die. Now the die is gonna have a nothing, it's gonna have a one or a two on it. If it has nothing, nothing will happen. If it has a one, anybody behind will move up one space. You always start with the back. Then you go to the next group, which will be blue, and there's one space, so both of these will move up. There's no more spaces in front. Then whoever, and it could have just easily been two, so let's say you would end up with a situation where, uh, Yellow was two points behind, or two spots behind, you roll on two, then he would have went up one, two, everything else would have been the same. Now, then what's gonna happen, I'm just give you an example here of how it, it may have ended. So let's say it ended like this, then everybody who doesn't have somebody in the two spots ahead of them will get an exhaustion token, or add a one to your bag, which will obviously slow you down. So, but let me give you another scenario. Let's say it ended something like this. So this time, red will get one. Whoever's in the first will always get one. That's a catch-up mechanism. There's somebody in front of green, so he doesn't get one. Blue will get one. And yellow will get, add one to their bag. That's kind of how the exhaustion tokens are going to work. Now, each side of these is going to have something a little bit different that can work if you want to add these in. So the three, uh, this one's going to act just like the other ones, except for if there's a space in front of you, instead of adding one of these exhaustion tokens, you're going to add two to the mix. This one's going to just give you some tight curves. Only one person can be in these spaces at a time. That will shift things up a little bit. This one will also be all the one spaces. It's a little bit harder. There's going to be no side by sides. And then the last one, you're going to be going downhill. It's going to have you to draw four, but you get to play two, which can be pretty helpful if you get a lot of these exhaustion tokens in the front. The only other thing that can be added to the game is the ramp, which will activate on a three or a four. So if it's here and you're coming through and you're using... Uh, let's say it's on a three sign. And yellow's coming through, and they go one, two, three with a three. They get to move two extra spaces. That's what the ramp is going to do. First one to make a complete lap is the winner of the game.